If the profit gods were fair, they would say no profit for Rolex watches because Rolex watches haven't really innovated in 50 years and Rolex watches don't do customer service very well and Rolex watches are like a simple device that nobody actually needs anymore. So we should definitely not have profit for Rolex watches. There's a concept that you shared with everybody who reads the book, which is this, is it doesn't take a gigantic amount of people for you to reach a state of being oversubscribed. Before we get mm. into that, what does oversubscribe mean and how is this concept relevant to anybody who is in a marketing space? Okay, if you're in the marketing space, you've forgotten lesson 101 of microeconomics, right? I have, and the reason I'm saying that I have, right? Here's lesson one of microeconomics. Demand and supply sets the price and demand and supply creates profit. So it's an imbalance between demand and supply. An oversubscribed business is a business that has limited or constrained supply and there are more people who want that supply than is available. Pretty simple, it's a hot day, there's lots of people out in the in the park there's one little ice cream van and it's got a limited amount of ice cream they are not doing discounts on that day right because there are plenty of people lining up to buy the ice cream there's constrained supply and there's excess demand what we forget in the digital world and what we forget when we're marketers and we're creatives is we forget that it's a simple simple game that demand and supply set the price and demand and supply set profit. Let me just give you a little example. If there was a profit God sitting up on the cloud, handing out profit fairly, and the profit God says, I'm gonna give profit to the companies that take the most risk, that have the most on the line, that have to get everything right, they probably would give profit to airlines. They would say, well, if you're an airline, You've got to be safe, have amazing customer service, massive capital expenditure, huge risks, innovation, all this sort of stuff. And it would be fair that airlines should make 50, 60, 70% profit because of all the things that have to go right in order to run an airline. But they don't, they make like 5%. If the profit gods were fair, they would say no profit for Rolex watches because Rolex watches haven't really innovated in 50 years and Rolex watches don't do customer service very well and Rolex watches are like a simple device that nobody actually needs anymore. So we should definitely not have profit for Rolex watches. But what happens in reality? What happens is Rolex is massively profitable and airlines are not. And why? Because Rolex constrains supply and has an 18 month waiting list and airlines have plenty of supply and they're fighting to try and get people to take the seats because those planes have to fly every day anyway. This is the principle and the principle that needs to be applied if you're a creative is you need to create an official capacity where that is your official number. You need other people to know that that's the official number and you need to let other people know that that official capacity is in hot demand, that there are plenty of people who want to buy from you, that there's a waiting list and that demand and supply tension is rife. Okay, so somebody's gonna be listening to this. Uh, yeah, genius, supply and demand, I get it. You want to have greater demand and supply, but yeah. how do we apply this in the real world? In the book, you write about this and that you produced many events before, and then you just floated the idea and you said, you know, unless we sell this number of tickets, we're not gonna do it. How you got people to be in this oversubscribed state. Can you walk us through that so then people can understand how this works? I wanted to run a workshop. We wanted to sell the tickets out. If we had a rang through and tried to sell the tickets over the phone, or if we had have sent out an email and said, the tickets are available, buy the tickets. It probably wouldn't have been able to easily sell those tickets, but here's what we did instead. Instead of just trying to sell the tickets, we first sent out an email through our partners and through our own database and said, we're going to be running an event. The tickets are going to be on going on sale next week. And the only way to get those tickets is to join a Facebook group that will be the discussion group in the lead up to the event. And that's where we're going to drop the tickets. Now, we had told people there was only gonna be 100 tickets. And when we emailed all the databases, they all joined the Facebook group and hundreds of people joined the Facebook group. So there was something called demand and supply tension created, and it was uh, transparency. This is one of the principles in the book called transparency of demand and supply tension. Basically, transparency is any time the market can see that you're oversubscribed, they can see that there is a lot of a lineup. They can see people want to want to buy from you. What happened is that people could see that three, four, five hundred people had joined the group in order to get tickets, but there was only going to be a hundred tickets. So when those tickets went on sale, they got snapped up within like twenty minutes, and that was leveraging demand and supply tension with transparency. 